I want to create a really cool guppy farm or something like that for the Exoterra paludarum you see behind me. Now down the bottom there, oh, there you go, there's nothing in it at the moment, which is absolutely fine. I moved it over here and it was all full up and I had something going on in there but I didn't like it and also I couldn't move it with it all in. So now it's here, it's empty, I want to do something really simple, just a nice rocky background, clear open sand in the foreground and then you'll really be able to see those guppies popping against it. Proper guppies, not endless. I've got endless going on in the nano pond but in this scape I want to have real guppies like lots of males, lots of females, really colourful ones and just, just for fun. Just to see really what sort of breeds we get and colours and just, it's just fun isn't it? Guppies are always fun, they're so easy to breed. If you guys haven't bred them before get a few females in a male and within weeks you're going to have babies everywhere. <laughs> So over to the discus tank, remember I told you about the cyano or cyano bacteria? Have a look, have a look, let's get right in there. You can barely see any now, so there's just the finest dusting of green which could be just standard algae to be honest, it is a white sand and white sand doesn't stay white forever which isn't a problem because it just starts looking more and more natural as time progresses. Fish are doing absolutely fantastic. There is now no algae on any of the plants at all. Remember I was getting the diatoms and there was a little bit of string algae going on but again all of that has sort of gone away now. The Siamese algae eaters, these bad boys, don't... where are you gone? Where are you gone? Oh, <laughs> they ran away from it. There he is, right in the middle there. You see him? The Siamese algae eater, I've got three of them in there, they're doing a fantastic job. And the Otosynclus as well, so there's one up there. They used to all huddle on the glass and I could count them, but they're now they're all just in and amongst all of this stuff all the time, which is good because that's what we got them for. So this is actually the first time I've kept big fish. A lot of you keep saying, are you going to keep big fish? I mean, these things are pretty big, right? And with big fish and a white substrate comes lots of poop that you can notice all the time. Now, I think it's really worth mentioning the filtration setup on this system that's really allowing me to take advantage of quick maintenance and cleaning. Again, that helps stay on top of algae control and those sorts of things. And I think that's why I'm able to get like a really clean, good looking tank without packing it full of hundreds and hundreds of plants like I usually do. So obviously the last time I mentioned the filtration on the tank was when I set it up and George when he came as well. But we've got an Oase 600 in their thermo that is as well. So it's got a built in heater. You can, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, this is difficult, right? This isn't a paid post, by the way, guys, but I just think it's worth saying that they're well worth the money because you can just pop this whole section out here, go clean it and put it back in again, and you've effectively cleaned the whole filter because the rest of the sponges stay clean. This is the pre-filter section that water first goes through, and because of that, it picks up all the major parts of the gunk. Now, you can clean it in seconds, and what that means is that it keeps all your nitrates and everything down, and the tank just doesn't get a load of algae. Again, we can do that on both sides, so I can do all of that in about 10 minutes. Job done, and the tank just continues to look fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with all of it. The setup is so easy to maintain. You know, I think that when you look at a setup like this, you, you can sit there and think, oh, that's not for me, because it looks like a load of work. There isn't a load of work. 30% water change once a week is what I do. You know, if you're breeding discus or trying to grow them out, you obviously want to be doing a lot more bigger water changes than that. But these guys are already beasts, look, aren't they? This, I don't want to scare you guys, but look, against my hand, they're huge. Plenty of size from this aquarium. Remember, it goes back far, far more than it actually looks like. Look at that. Look at the depth of it. So there's loads of water volume, plus the two filters. I think it's just a great, great setup. we got parcels, I've already opened this and I'm about to take it out and hold it because I'm holding the camera really awkward at the moment and I don't actually remember what I bought in these. <laughs> So I am now vlogging with that new Joby. It's really nice to hold actually. Jakey, do you want to talk to everyone? You've just had uh, chicken pox, haven't you? Yes. And now it's all cleared up, which is awesome. And you're all better. But we think Doodles has got it now. <laughs> Airline hose, yes. Need that. So I got this like dried moss just to see what it looks like and so far, yeah, <laughs> not too sure, but we'll see. And also some airline hose, some bigger stuff, 
Both these airline hoses are for the new shrimp tank rack setup thingy. And, oh, that's it so far. Well, there's more coming, more coming later. So that's everything plumbed in and ready to go on the new system. Now I've never done anything like this before, so hopefully it works out. So yeah, all of our airline tubes are connected. One, two, three, four, five, six. Check valves on each and every one of them. So underneath here, you can see there's a check valve. Once you start a vacuum, which is what you'll get, which is what's gonna pull all the debris into these filters. If there's a power outage, that vacuum will continue and could actually flood the whole place and pull the water out of all, every single one of these tanks. The check valve basically stops the water going past that point so if it was to go back down the tube it would just stay there which is you know it's a safety feature something you need to put in if you're doing one of these systems for sure they don't cost anything really so they're well worth it but now for the next thing we need to get all our soil in and fill it up with water and this is the soil that i'm going to be using it's the tropica stuff it's the more fine sort of version you can get like bigger ones and smaller ones i think the finer stuff will be good for the shrimp So that's the aquasoil in every tank. Look, kind of different amounts in everyone, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting the aquasoil in just so I can get everything cycling. So there's a media in there. It'll probably come out again when I rescape each tank. It might not, it depends what I'm doing in that tank. But yeah, for now, that'll do. <laughs> everything is full of water. Now I am proper excited for getting this going like properly. Right, I'm gonna switch it on and just hopefully everything works. Like I say, I've never done this before, but it should be pretty simple. Look, you can see it all loose under there. I'll tidy that up. I wanna make sure the system works first. Moment of truth, guys. I need to turn everything down a little because it's all sort of going nuts, but we are working. I can barely hear the, uh, the, the uh, what's it called? The, the thing that makes the air. <laughs> what's it called? The Bubble Maker 3000, we're calling it. The Bubble Maker 3000 is working away. Everything's working. That's loud, isn't it, though? Well, not loud, but, you know, I quite like the noise, I'm not gonna lie. But I need to turn them all down and get them just a trickle, because obviously we're gonna get a lot of evaporation. I might need to even put some lids on each one of these. Wouldn't hurt to, to be fair. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I mean, it's a good level at the moment. It's quite a therapeutic noise as well. Oh, I'm so excited now. This means we can crack right on and just start doing so. I'm not gonna rush it though. I wanna order specific shrimps online. So, you know, most shrimp shops you go to, or not even shrimp shops, we don't have shrimp shops. That's really hard to say. Most sort of fish shops that you go to only have like, you know, crystal reds and cherry shrimp. So I'm not really gonna be able to find tons of different types in a shop. So I'm gonna have to start ordering quite a few online, wait for them to come. I can set scapes up when I know they're coming, that sort of thing. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, so I've adjusted the bubbles to like that sort of level, just to sort of trickle. You can barely hear it. It's not going crazy on the surface or anything. Really liking that. I think that's absolutely perfect. Oh, so excited. Bubbles. Bubbles, the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> 